The glumness of Postem's weather has deterred tourists from visiting King Frederick II's carefree Santusi Palace. With exquisite interior designs, magnificent gardens, and fountains built by two of the most prominent architects of the period, Knob Dostroff and Sivon Gontard, the time capsule of the 1700s Germany has marked itself on UNESCO's World Heritage List. The palace acted not only for his leisure, it was also where his passion for beauty had prospered. Having the adoration for artwork ever since King Frederick was young, he wanted his own collection. Adorned upon the walls of the palace, his collection style ranged from French Rococo to Renaissance. Artworks of Antoine Hoiteau were one of his favorites. Golden gildings were often found as an accompanying embellishment. Frederick the Great was a passionate and talented transverse flute player and composer. He composed a hundred sonatas and four symphonies. Right now, playing as the background music is one of Frederick's compositions. The Marmoiselle, also known as the Marble Hall, is sheltered by a beautiful cupola and dome. The shiny floors and the intricate pillars are made of white kakara and Italian marble and torsia. One famous acquaintance in front of King Frederick was the French philosopher Voltaire. They often discussed philosophical ideologies and Voltaire's dreams for two years in this room. On August 17, 1786, it was upon this chair that Frederick de Cossa died, ending 46 years of his reign of Prussia. He was known for his audacity, heroism, and his great war tactics that helped defeat the Franco-Austrian armies. He was loved greatly by the people, and many still come to visit his grave in commemoration. Potatoes on his graves are the remembrance for the king's efforts in bringing the popular vegetable into Prussia. However, it was not he who did so. 200 years after King Frederick's death, tourists from all around the world still come and visit the wonderful place, learning more of its founder and the history behind it.